You know how they say your life flashes before your eyes when you're dying? <laughs> that shit's real talk. I saw it all, huh? Yeah. There I am, bleeding out. And suddenly I'm getting the third degree from Matsugane-san. Back when I was still just a rookie. Captain Hamura stares me down like, time to lose that pinky. And then, Higashi starts crying for me. Oh, if I'm gonna go, I ought to get a better final scene than that shit, right? Right? I'm sure it'll be rosier when the time comes for real. Glad you pulled through, man. That bastard Soma, though. Next time, he's fucked. We could have avenged Sawa-sensei if it weren't for that stupid ambush. Well, you didn't tell the cops about him, did you? Had to give the cops a statement, so I did. With a generous side of bullshit. That'll get you busted, you know. I'm joking. All I said was the truth. That I got knifed by the same twisted fuck who got Sawa-sensei. In that case, it's only a matter of time until Soma's arrested. So for now, we'll go after Kuwana, the piece that ties it all together. We just have to find him before R.K. does. Kuwana, huh? He's on my shit list too, just so you know. Huh? Kuwana must have had some sort of agenda back when he first met us. In fact, it's probably because you were looking into Mikoshiba. He palled around with me all because of that. I'm just a sucker of the agency, huh? I wouldn't say that. Still... The moment an ass for me to kick turns up, this is the shape I'm in. Just focus on getting better. Tsukuma will stop by later, too. What? Sugiura gonna give me the cold shoulder? He and I are off to question Mamiya. He said he'd drive us for Majincho and everything.
So, we off to see Mamiya? I'm ready whenever you are. Yep, let's go. Alright, let's do this. If your theory is accurate, then Mamiya was involved in both Kawai and Mikoshiba's murders. And even if that's off, we can at least learn more about Kawana-san as a teacher. Hi, it's Yagami. I dropped by with Genda Law the other day. Not again. I have just a few more questions I'd like to ask you. You told me the last visit would be your only one. Seriously, why do you keep showing up here uninvited? Please, just leave me alone. I suppose I should mention, I'm here today as a detective, not a lawyer. So what? And my partner here is Sugiura. He's with an agency called Yokohama 99. Never heard of him. He's based in Ijinsho. He's working a case. Maybe you saw it on the news? The murder of Serio High teacher Yoko Sawa, killed in her own apartment. You and Sawa-san were classmates in high school, is that correct? After leaving Kurokawa 13 years ago, Sawa-san moved to Ijinsho to teach. Uh, are you still there? What is it you want? I haven't seen Yoko-chan since graduation. Now go. You're barking up the wrong tree. Maybe you'll remember Kitakata-sensei then. I ran into him at Sawa-sensei's home right before the murder. He was your homeroom teacher at Kurokawa, but resigned after the Mitsuru Kusamoto incident. Just like you, he appears to be connected to Sawa-san. So why am I being singled out? Can't you just ask someone else? Believe me, it's a long list. But right now, we're here to find out how Sawa-san got mixed up in all this. You two weren't necessarily on bad terms, were you? If I had to say, we weren't on the best terms either. Uh, how convenient. Because that's a perspective I'd like to hear more about as well. My husband will be home soon. Can you keep it quick? I'll give him my best shot. Exactly. Thanks for hearing us out. Hold on just a moment. Huh. wonder what's going on. You don't think she bolted, do you? Mmm, wouldn't count on it. Should we ring again? Sorry to keep you waiting. I just wanted to clean up a little. Is your son home today? He's at English school right now. I have to pick him up soon. Doesn't your husband help with any of that? You said he'd be home soon, right? Excuse me, but you are in no place to make those kinds of comments. <laughs> Sorry. Didn't mean to pry. Well, what is it you want to ask? Have you been in contact with Kitakata-sensei lately? I haven't. He's... someone I'd rather not have in my life. Are you surprised that he stayed in Ijinsho after resigning from the school? No, not really. How about the fact that now he's using an alias? I had no clue. But again, he has nothing to do with me. Do you remember Mitsuru Kusumoto? Yes, we were classmates in high school. He jumped off the school's roof after his classmate Shinya Kawai bullied him. 
I hear he's still in a coma, 13 years later. Weren't you going to ask me about Yoko-chan? I was, but there seem to be an awful lot of Kurokawa graduates surrounding this case. And strangely enough, they were all in your class. Kitakata-sensei being the prime example, as well as a guy named Akaike-san. Remember him? Well, you're right. We were in the same class. And would you say you're all familiar with Mitsuru Kusumoto's situation? Yes, but... That's not a warm memory for any of us. I understand. I'm sure it's not. The groping was orchestrated, right? Excuse you? When Akihiro Ihara grabbed you on the train, you were in on that, weren't you? The whole thing was a conspiracy, staged to play out as it did. You need to leave! Right now! Dude, what gives? No one would even think to consider a predator and his victim could be accomplices. It's unheard of. But if it was to establish a murder alibi, that's another story, considering how much lighter the sentence is. That way, Ihara got away with killing Mikoshiba paying only a fraction of the price. But as luck would have it, proving it is going to require you to cooperate with us now. If you don't get up this second, I am calling the police! I mean it! It took me quite a long time to figure out how you and Ahara were connected. But once I learned Yokosawa attended Kurokawa, it all started falling into place. She was in your homeroom class. She looked after Toshiro Ahara. She was the link to everyone. But just before I could ask her about any of this, she was murdered by Kamrocho Gang. That same gang has been hunting your old teacher, Kitakata-sensei. What is it you want from me? Mamiya-san, do you have any idea where Kitakata-sensei could be? He may be Kawana the Handyman, but he hasn't answered his work line since Sawasan's murder. I don't know! He was my teacher a decade ago! I barely remember his face! Well, I'm willing to wager Kitakata Sensei still remembers yours. I'll prove it right now. Oh, God. I'm sure you know what this is, Mamiya-san. A Kurokawa yearbook? Why do you have one? We borrowed it from the scene of Sawa-sensei's murder. You borrowed it? I highly doubt that's legal. Besides, what does this have to do with Kitakata-sensei? Ha! Ah. Do you not see it? No one sees it, Yagami-san. Now would you mind showing her the right thing? See for yourself. No. This was recorded at Kurokawa Academy 13 years ago. Feeling nostalgic yet? It was well hidden. Your Kitakata sensei had it on a USB drive. He really didn't want this thing being seen. The most interesting part is the date. It's the very same day Mitsuru Kusumoto jumped off the school roof. And hanging out in the back, we see you, laughing and cheering right along with the other bullies. Guess it's safe to say it's a good thing your family wasn't home. Wouldn't exactly want them seeing this, would we? Has this video come up? Has Kitakata-sensei ever mentioned to you that he had it? Please! 
considering the angle, I get the feeling that this was recorded in secret. And based on your reaction, did you even know it existed? Uh. <gasps> you know what happened to Mitsurukun. He's been in a coma ever since what you did to him that day. But still, only one of you took the fall. Shinya Kawai took all the blame. Well, sort of, being that he got fired, Kitakata-sensei took heat too. Still, you all just moved right along with your lives. You've even got happy little families. What? Are you expecting someone? Amiya-san? Well... I knew what happened someday. What do you mean? Looks like she wanted some company. Do a shit show. And would you look at that? Our old friend Akaike san showed up to play a part. So you are all working together. What should we do with them? They're the jerks who hurt Tsukumo kun, right? Break every finger on their hand, it still won't make you even. But come on, they may have more on the way. I have an old haunted... ...and Mamiya-san's coming with. Huh? Let's not cause a scene, okay? I'd hate for a finger to slip and post this video. Hey, you think this is your personal jail, Yagami? What makes you think you can keep bringing captives here? Well, it's the safest spot we know. Doesn't it feel good to be such a reliable friend? Yeah, Higashi, be cool. We won't be around long. Be cool? You think time's the issue? This is about respect, man! What's your call? We kicking him out? Oh, quick bit of news, Higashi-san. Kaito-san got shanked in Yokohama. What? What the fuck? Kaito Aniki? By who? You'll know once we're done explaining. Let me introduce you to Mamiya-san first. She called up her friends to come after us just a little bit ago. Yeah, and I'd do it again. I don't give a shit about that! What happened to Aniki? I've paid him back already, Yagami. Fuck those RK assholes! And how could Aniki have let him get to him like that? Now that Higashi-san's up to speed, should we get to it? I imagine Mamiya-san doesn't want to drag this out. What do you intend to do with me? First, you'll tell us everything you know. We'll decide how to deal with you afterward. 
<sighs> then let's get this over with. What do you want to know? Let's start with the video. Any thoughts you'd care to share? I found it on a flash drive in Kitakata Sensei's room. Or should I say, Kiwana's. I take it that means he's the one who recorded it. Yes. That means Kiwana already knew back then the rest of you were bullies too? Yes. If that's the case, then why was Shinya Kawai the only student thrown under the bus for it? Kiwana-san didn't show that tape to anyone else? We had no idea we were even being taped. We didn't find out about the video, or the reason he sat on it so long until way after graduating. Why exactly did he sit on it for so long? Kitakata-sensei said he kept it so... so he could teach us for the rest of our lives. What? If that video came out at the time of the incident, I'm sure life would have been hard for us then. After all, Kawai was exposed online, and that would mean millions of yen in compensation for damages. Yeah, but you guys could have wound up in the same boat. No. I mostly would have come across as dumb kids he roped into helping him. We might have caught some flack, but people would chalk it up to kids and their cliques and move on. But that's only how I would have gone if it had come out while we were still teenagers. You're saying circumstances are different now? I have a child now. A husband, an upscale apartment. If the world sees that tape now, I'll lose it all. And what do you think would happen to my son? The son of a woman who drove a kid to attempt suicide. His life would be ruined. That recording is more than kids being cruel. Mitsuru jumped from the school roof that very night and is still in a coma today. I get it. You have that much more to lose now than when you were a kid. Same for all my classmates. Kurokawa Academy is a prestigious school, after all. Most graduates go off to great universities and land high-paying jobs. One started his own company. Others have families. And they're all in your position too, huh? If that video gets out, they lose everything. Exactly. Do you get it now? He waited for all of us to get what we wanted in life. Just so he could threaten to take it all away. And when that time came, he started contacting us. Every student you see in that video. When was the first time Kawana approached you? Five years ago. I was out on a walk with my son. When he came strolling up out of the blue. At first, I barely recognized him. His eyes were so hollow. Then without so much as a word, he took out his phone and played that video. He's a psychopath. Well, all you kids tormenting Mitsuru looked pretty psychopathic to me. Oh, and you're so perfect. An angel who never once acted out of line, never lashed out at someone weaker than you, or sided with the group to shut someone out. Everyone does it. We were just lucky enough to have some creep tapers picking on some kid who couldn't take it. Why did this have to happen to me? I'd say it's because bad things happen to bad people. You'll sling your barbs from a safe distance, but once you're on the other side of it, you curl up and play victim. <laughs> you said it was five years ago that Kuwana showed you the video? Reminds me of something Shirosaki-sensei was looking into. What? There was this guy. I think his name was Shinya Kawai. Something about him getting snatched off the streets about five years back. Then it was you guys. You're the ones who abducted him in Kamrocho and murdered him. No, it wasn't us. We could never do something like that. Wasn't us, huh? So you're not denying he was murdered after all? Who was it then? All Sensei told us was to find Kawai somewhere in Kamurocho. 
then bring him back with us, no matter what it took. Did Kawana tell you what he wanted with him? He needs to be there when you all beg for forgiveness. That's all he said. And if we refused, he'd leak the video. So we all went to see Kawai, but he wanted nothing to do with Sensei. Considering he'd cost him everything, that came as no surprise. But doing nothing would cost the rest of you everything too. Yes. So we had to force him into our van. After he put up a fight. Yeah, that lines up with what the local eyewitnesses said. So then what happened? Nobody's heard from the guy since. We were directed to bring him to a wharf in Yokohama. And that's where we begged for forgiveness. After that, he said we were free to go. All except Kawai. So you left him there alone with Kawana? We had to. The day after, I got a message on my phone from Sensei. What did it say? Nothing. There was only a video. It was of all of us, pushing Kawai into the van. Turns out he recorded what we did in the city. You can see all our faces so clearly. How we covered Kawai's mouth as he screamed for help, I... Even if you know all the backstory, the video is a clear-cut abduction! As I was watching it the first time, another message came in. This time, a picture. When I saw it, I just went cold. That's when I knew I would never be able to escape him. It was a picture of Kawai. Dead. Anyone who saw those messages would think we killed him after shoving him into the van. And that's how he got his real leverage on his former students. Since then, we've been at his beck and call. No matter what he tells us to do, we wouldn't dare refuse him. He's giving you orders? That man! He forces us to help him. He makes us accomplices to murder. Murder? What the hell? Murder who, exactly? Any bullies involved in suicides. That's who Sensei's got it in for. Anyone he could find across the country. He doesn't even care how old the case is. If a student commits suicide, and bullying is suspected as the cause, he'll turn up. As far as I know, counting Kawai, I think... I think he's killed at least seven people. Seven? How's he doing this? So his idea of justice is killing bullies? Across the entire country? He said that's the only way we can atone. Anyone who drives someone to suicide must always face justice. Until society comes to terms with this, he says we'll keep getting our hands dirty. That way, we might be able to save the next few Mitsurus before it's too late for them. Not sure I should say this out loud, but I'm kind of rooting for this guy now. Mm, yeah, let's not. So was the murder of Hiro Mikashiba part of that agenda? We know Mikashiba drove Ihara-san to suicide four years prior. That has to be why Kawana let Ihara murder him, and how you found your role in establishing his alibi. Not just me. Grabbing Mikoshiba required a good number of people. All the people who pinned Ihara down, and even the ones who filmed it, they were working for Sensei. So that's how it went down. We had an unspoken agreement that we wouldn't directly take part in any killing. He just makes us his accomplices somehow. Like luring a target or digging a hole for a body. But the one thing we can't ever do is turn him down. If we do, he'll send his video of us abducting Kawai to the police. And then Kawai's body will turn up with our fingerprints all over his corpse. And we know that because he's hidden Kawai's corpse in a freezer somewhere. He's preserving one of his murder victims? So as long as he has that, you're wrapped around his finger. Sounds to me like Kawan has had one thing on his mind for 13 years. 
Sitting on that video and becoming an Ijin Cho handyman was all in service of his real motive, killing off bullies. He's dragged all his former students into this hell until the day it destroys every single one of you. Is today that day? We'll see. I'm still curious about a few things though, if you don't mind. What? There are these scumbags chasing down Kiwana called RK. What part did they play? Strangely enough, they never came up once during your confession. So tell me, why'd they come for Yoko Sawa? That I don't know for certain. But Sensei did reach out to Yoko-chan about six months ago over the phone. He was asking her about the suicide at Serio High. The suicide at Serio High? You must be talking about Toshiro Ehara. The lawsuit played out like no bullying took place, right? That the school wasn't responsible. But Yoko-chan was a teacher there, and Sensei was able to get the truth out of her. How did he do that? What did he say? From Yoko-chan's perspective, she and Sensei were both just teachers dealing with students attempting suicide. I think that's why she let her guard down and told them everything. After learning the truth, Sensei believed Mikoshiba needed to be held accountable. So if Sawa-sensei hadn't talked to him, the horror wouldn't have gotten involved? And none of this would be happening in Ijincho? Possibly. No, this isn't right. Sawa-sensei didn't know Kuana's identity or his objectives. She thought she was just talking through her problems with a sympathetic ex-teacher. At the very least, she sure as hell didn't deserve to die for that! It's not like we're the ones who did it. Who is it? Block number. Hello? Yo, know who this is, Yagami? Kuwana? Yeah. <laughs> I heard you're looking for me. Where are you? I'm willing to meet you now if you come alone. But you have to let Mamiya go in exchange. What? All right. She's free as soon as I see you. Works for me. Then come on down to your office. I thought I'd let myself in. What? <laughs> Gotta say, this chair's pretty comfy. Pretty sure I locked up behind me when I left. Listen, I'll only meet you alone. No one else. And don't make me wait long, or I could change my mind. He told me to meet him alone. You can let mommy san go once I confirm he's there. You gonna be alright by yourself? Well, he already knows mommy san's with us. I'm guessing he was watching us from somewhere. And I can't afford to do anything that would piss him off enough to make him disappear. Uh, got it. Oh, we'll take care of this end of it. Shouldn't you move your ass? Hope you don't mind, I let myself in. Now are you gonna hold up your end and release you, Imamiya? 
Come on. You and I can either try to make this work, or neither of us is gonna get what we want. So, you gonna make the call or what? Hello? Yagami-san? I'm with Kawana. You can let Mamiya-san go. Got it. Will do. Sorry about all this, Yagami. Why don't you sit down? Maybe it's time you and I had a heart-to-heart. -heart. How's Kaito holding up? <sighs> Kaito-san's recovering in the hospital. For now. Sawa-sensei is another story, though. I can hardly believe it. She was the last person I wanted to get mixed up in all this shit. If that's the case, why were you already waiting in her apartment? RK's top men were lying in wait over there to get their hands on you. So why was she the one lying on the ground? Answer me, Kawana. Was it because of you? Would you feel better if it was? How dare you? You're thinking that if you hadn't stuck your nose in her affairs, she might be at home grading her papers right now. You tell me. Is that what's eating away at you right now? Because if it is, you're mistaken. That guilt is mine alone to bear. It's my burden to carry. When I saw on the news that she had been murdered in cold blood, it felt like the whole world had stopped spinning to me. I would take it all back right now if I could. But unfortunately, to fix this I'd need to turn the clock back further than you'd think. You mean back to when you were a school teacher? Yeah, basically. Back to when I still had a little faith in humanity. Seeing someone's life get cut short, you never really bounce back from it, do you? But I don't have to tell you that. I did my homework on you, Yagami. It seems you were a fairly accomplished lawyer. You even scored a murder acquittal. But we both know how that ended. The death of an innocent young woman. You and I are the same. We both have scars. And they're the type of scars that never fully heal. Yeah. Maybe you're right. But for Sawakun, it was 13 years ago. The very day before Mitsuru Kusumoto jumped, she stopped me in the hall so she could tell me about how serious the bullying really was. Up until that day, I just assumed it was boys being boys, teasing. I figured it was harmless, that they'd get bored with it, and then they'd move on. I mean, come on. Kawaii had to have been twice the size of Mitsuru. It's not like I'd seen any fighting. So I warned him not to overdo it. And eventually he would take the hint. Well, according to what I was told, you smirked, actually. Yeah. I guess that's what I did. That was too late. Sawakun had to point it out. Sensei. How could you be so blind, she asked. Her eyes were this piercing mix of pity and scorn. According to what she told me, nearly half the class was bullying Mitsuru. She said she'd seen him at the station. She made it sound like he had half a mind to jump onto the tracks right then and there. I'm not so presumptuous anymore. But back then, I used to think my students were my biggest fans. I thought I'd won their hearts and minds. But the look on Sawakun's face that day made me see the truth. I couldn't just go on smiling like nothing happened. So I decided to do my homework. The next day, I put a hidden camera in the classroom after school. So you admit that you're the one who recorded that video? Yeah. You saw it, right? Talk about the ugly side of kids. Hard to watch, wasn't it? Unfortunately, by the time I picked up the camera and saw what it recorded, 
Mitsuru had made his jump. I missed him by a few crucial moments. What happened in that classroom was the final straw. Later on, all the bullies were asked what happened. Each and every one of them lied. Kawai started it. It wasn't our idea, they said. To anyone outside of it, all they'd seen was Kawai forcing Mitsuru to do his bidding. So the people held culpable were Kawai and myself. The callous homeroom teacher who deliberately turned a blind eye. That was the day I began living my life with real purpose. So you couldn't forgive your students who got away with bullying. You went so far, you put aside your own life to make sure they atoned somehow. That's right. Mitsuru Kusumoto's still a vegetable. He's as good as dead. But I don't care. We have no right to forget about him. You say that, even though Sawa-sensei ended up paying for it. <laughs> I'll ask you again. Why were you at her apartment the other day? Don't dodge the question this time. I wouldn't say I dodged it. But I suppose I should explain from the beginning. Four years ago, there was a suicide at Sawakun's school. It was her own student this time. You know this, right? A student at Seiryo High School? Toshiro Ehara. Yeah. When she was in court, Sawakun had no choice but to say there wasn't any bullying. Soon as she told me that, I knew Hiro Mikoshiba would be my next target. Of course, she had no idea about any of that. When Sawakun learned Mikoshiba had been murdered, though, she reached out to me herself. What did she want? She had a sneaking suspicion that I was involved in his death. She called me a few times, prodding carefully for answers. <laughs> Quite the perceptive lady, really. And? What kind of answers did you give her? I denied any knowledge of it. But at one point, she mentioned something kind of odd. That there was a detective at the school already investigating the incident. Huh? She meant you, of course. A detective already knee-deep into the case, despite the police barely even knowing about Mikoshiba. The police are a pain in the ass, but when an out-of-town detective comes sniffing around, that's bad. I knew I had to act fast to get you off the trail. Although, Sawakun was a problem too. I thought I'd kill two birds with one stone. And then what? First I found out where the two of you would be meeting up, at that little cafe. Then I hired the Leo monk to step in. <laughs> but you put up one hell of a fight. They had strength in numbers, but you would have taken out the whole group if I hadn't stepped in. Nonetheless, my other message went through. At the same time, Sawakun was handed a photo of Mikoshiba's final moments. I left that task to someone you know. Yui Mamiya. They hadn't seen each other in 13 years. Sawakun had no idea. The lady in the sunglasses. Yui Mamiya was involved in that too? Everything I did that night was intended as a warning to Sawakun. Although, I guess I didn't have to be so extreme about it. Yeah. Sawa-sensei was too smart. She must have started suspecting that you'd had something to do with Mikoshiba's murder. After all, who else could have known we'd be meeting at that cafe? She'd have traced it right back to you. Even if Sawakun had started to suspect me, I knew she wouldn't sell me out to the cops. We're two alike. The both of us lost students to suicide on our watch. That said, I couldn't bear the thought of dragging her down into the mess I started, so I scared her off, and I thought she would stay away. <laughs> the day she was killed, she called to ask if we could speak in person. 
I could tell something was wrong. She was on the verge of tears the whole call. Then she broke down. I asked her why, of course, but she wouldn't give me a straight answer no matter how I tried to phrase the question. So then what? Did you just waltz on over there? It doesn't seem like you. Watch it. You don't know me well enough to say that. Maybe. But I assume you had some sort of plan going in. Were you gonna confess to her? Here's the thing. If she'd figured out that I was behind Mikoshiba, and it didn't sit well with her, I would have told her every last detail. Sawaku, no. I think she would have understood me. Or at least that's what I had believed. In hindsight, I think she was forced to make that call. Under normal circumstances, I'm sure she'd have rather washed her hands of me. Hard as it is to hear, I think she called me under duress. RK probably had her hostage. That would explain the vague responses. That's probably why her voice was trembling. It's tragic. You mean it was RK? Why do they want you so badly anyway? I don't know. What? If I knew their angle, I'd be doing more than just scurrying around. You serious? Believe me, I'm just as clueless as you are, much as I hate to admit it. Honest. I'm not thrilled that a small army wants my head on a platter. Have you noticed? How RK seems to show up at the worst possible times? Someone must be pulling their strings. Then we're on the same page. At least we agree on something. <laughs> Just a sec. Yeah. I'm still over here with Yagami-san. You're not being tailed by any of his guys, are you? Okay. Then I'll meet you right now. That was Mamiya-kun. She said she's free. You guys have been true to your word. Tell Sugiura-kun that I said thank you. Now you want to go? We still have some business to settle here. Now remember, I'm the handyman here. Let me do the dirty work. I don't know what else to tell you. But you need to get out. While you still can. If you disappear into the night, I don't want to go busting my ass just to find you again. Before you leave, I'll need some contact info. A phone number would be nice. Oh, no need for that. As far as I'm concerned, this is goodbye. I wouldn't count on that.
won't get away. Where'd he go? Kawana! You guys again. If you really need the masks, come on, Kurokawa kids. You heard that, right? The detective here already knows everything. Kiwana! What are you going to do now? What do you think happens when he spills everything? Sounds like your lives are over, unless you shut him up. But Sensei, you'll finish the job for us, right? Huh? Is that you, Akaike? Oh, he's even got a name to your voice. But... Answer me, Sensei! I know, I know. I'll be the one to finish it. You just knock him out. Okay, then. Time to learn your lesson! Come on. What kind of lesson is this? Kawana! Oh no, Kawana! So nice of you to stick around, Mamiya-san. Well, since Kiwana couldn't stay, sounds like you're not out of the woods just yet, huh? <laughs>